Hey, it's Ray. Welcome to my channel and to a slightly different video today. This video is all about tea. Tom has been telling me for ages that I need to declutter our tea cupboard. And um, for my birthday, he got me this absolutely ridiculous, but also amazing, fancy speciality tea kettle, which brews different types of teas at different temperatures and has like an alarm on it. So I get woken up with a cup of tea in the morning, which is just absolutely amazing. These things made me think that now would be a good time to do the decluttering. And as I really, really enjoy watching videos like this, I thought I would make one of my own. Starting off with my favourite tea, this pot, alas, no longer contains T2 French Earl Grey. Um, it is stupidly expensive, however, I bought one lot of it once in order to own this gorgeous Parisian style little pot for my tea leaves and uh, I think it's the nicest tea I've ever had. This does still contain a really lovely tea though it has got inside it this Earl Grey, which Tom and I bought from Cape Town in South Africa. Next up, another tea caddy that doesn't contain what it says on the tin. Um, this was a Jubilee blend tea from Fortnum and Mason's, which was one of the highlight things I ever got in my university years. When we were living in a student house, my friend's grandma bought us a Fortnum and Mason hamper for Christmas, and it was honestly like one of the biggest, most exciting joys I've ever experienced. And because I love tea so much, my friend let me keep this lovely tea caddy, the Jubilee blend tea, that was in it was absolutely delicious, but it now just has in it like a plain everyday brew. This is what's left of the everyday brew, a tea pigs one. As you've probably noticed, I do have a preference for leaf tea. I have properly got into leaf tea over the years. Um, I just much prefer the ritual of it. I find it really soothing. Obviously like the tea tastes nicer and it's better for the environment. So it just feels like an all round win to drink leaf tea. The last of the black teas is this lemon balacate tea, which we were given as a gift from some of our friends who are living in Mozambique. It is plain black tea with a lemongrass. Next up, another Cape Town tea purchase from En Masse Tea Merchants. This one is Devil's Advocate, which is a spicy chili and ginger tea. Tom likes this more than me, but it's a really, really nice post-dinner drink. It just kind of wakes you right up and it feels so good for your digestion. I think it's based on a rooibosh tea as well, so it's like a spicy, gingery rooibosh tea, which is really lovely. The last of the leaf teas, this is my favourite herbal tea by far, it's called Cleansing Detox, and it's got lemongrass, lemon balm, fennel seeds, burdock roots, and it's just really, really soothing and delicious. It feels so hydrating, and I absolutely love to have this in the evening. Onto the tea bag teas that we have. We've got this chamomile tea. Chamomile is a nice evening tea. It's something that guests quite often ask for if they come around in the evening and tea is on offer, so it's good to have that in. In terms of normal tea tea bags that I have over here, and certainly when I was teaching and couldn't really use leaf tea in the classroom very easily, I used to drink copious amounts of Lipton yellow label tea, which any British person living abroad will know is like the foreign tea. <laughs> Um, you, I don't even know if you can buy this in the UK, but like in every single country that isn't the UK, you can buy this tea. And I find it highly entertaining over here because it's like a bilingual version. And so they have a little sort of pun about tea on both sides, one in English and one in French. And the French side is always so much better than the English side. So here you have un bon tea pour papo tea, like a nice tea for chats, you know, which you can see. You can see here, there's a pun and it works. Tea, tea. In English, what's a good chat without tea? Like not even an attempt at a pun. And most of them are like that. So yeah, they make me smile. Lastly, we have this vanilla tea, which sounds nice, but I don't think it would be nice. And Tom said it's absolutely disgusting. Uh, however, it makes the tea cupboard smell really, really good. So I'm keeping it for its scent alone. Onto mugs, and I have just discovered absolutely crazily that I only actually have three bookish mugs. I kind of imagined I had way more than that. My favourite book, and therefore also my favourite mug, this, this is a Penguin Books Jane Eyre one, and what I really love about it is that I've used this mug so much that the orange on it has really faded. Like if you compare it to a brand new equivalent of the same mug, it's so much more faded, and it kind of reminds me of a really old, beloved 
penguin paperback. Um, yeah, I'm super, super fond of this mug. Then a great little Victober mug. This is a little mini Charles Dickens mug, which has all the books and different main characters out of each of Dickens's books on it. My mum got this for me. She's a huge, huge Dickens fan, and I absolutely love it. I think it's so sweet. And finally, a good old Matilda mug. What reader does not absolutely adore Matilda? Next up, we have a collection of teaching mugs. If you have ever been a teacher or know a teacher, you'll probably know that receiving mugs is quite a standard thing as a teacher. And as a tea drinker, I always actually really enjoyed it. This mug, I think we can agree, is the first mug, which can definitely go. This was a mug from my most recent school and I put it in the dishwasher and everything that it said rubbed off. Uh, I think it was some sort of cheesy quote about how being a teacher is good. This was actually my favorite present that I received from a child. It's so simple, but I just love this, putting the tea in teacher. Lastly, I'm kind of throwing this in with my teaching mugs. This summer, after I'd finished my teacher training, I worked at Cambridge as a mentor as part of their increasing participations and diversity summer schools that they run. It was honestly so 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 fun and I got to see some really cool like old manuscripts and stuff as part of that. I got to live in college, it was absolutely beautiful and yeah just just had a wonderful time. So I kind of associate this with the teaching still even though it's obviously a university mug. Random uncategorized other mugs. This lovely mug belongs to Rachel Mug. It's chipped and was given to me by an ex-boyfriend. Uh, who I really, really dislike now. So I'm more than happy to get rid of that. I have no idea actually why I still have it. <laughs> this elephant mug is quite cute, but way too thick for my taste to drink out of. However, Tom says it's the only good mug in the whole house, so I guess we're keeping it for him. This is a mug from my actual university days. This was the ball in my first year at university and it was probably the best night of my life. I had so much fun. I absolutely treasure this mug. In fact, I had this mug and I broke it and I was so, so, so upset that one of my friends gave me hers to replace it. So I don't actually drink out of this mug that often because I'm really worried about damaging it, but I'm super, super fond of it. This is another mug that I was weirdly given by an ex after he broke one of my mugs that I really liked. He gave me a mug that's like one of those heat mugs and had a picture of me on it, which at the time I thought was a slightly unusual gift. Um, now the heat thing's worn off and so it's just a faded version of me dancing. It is quite a nice picture of me dancing, but I think this mug can definitely go. This is a mug my friend gave me at uni. When I was at university, I was really into like 1920s fashion and I had a calendar of this specific artwork, uh, which was from Clinton's Cards, as I remember. And one of my friends gave me this matching mug. It's actually a kind of a bit of a weird shape. You can sort of see it goes out at the top and it means I tend to spill the drink down my face when I'm drinking out of it. Um, so what I think I'm gonna do with it is take it upstairs and put some makeup in or something because I actually have a load of tubes and stuff which are really badly organized upstairs. So I think I might keep some of my mugs um, to organize stuff with, but I'm not gonna use it for drinking out of. This is such a sweet little country living mug. When I first moved to Congo, I really, really missed the UK. Um, and I subscribed to country living as a way to get a little taste of like the seasons and the countryside and basically home. Uh, and for some weird reason, I don't think any of my subscription magazines ever actually made it out to Congo, but this mug did, that was like a free gift for subscribing. We have this Swahili mug that we bought from Tanzania where we had some money to spare at the airport that we wanted to get rid of. I'm not a huge fan, but Tom quite likes it. Sort of gonna go on the maybe pile, I think he can have final decision on that. Then we have a big Frosties mug, and particularly as a child, I absolutely adored those sweet kitty cereals like Frosties. Um, my parents got me this mug. I'm quite fond of it because it's, it's sort of like an ongoing family joke how much I like cereal. Uh, it's maybe a little bit big though, I prefer drinking out of smaller mugs, so this might be another one which would be handy to put stuff in, but which I'm maybe not gonna be drinking out of. Love this mug, another Quentin Blake one. I used to live in Cambridge after I'd finished my teacher training when I was doing my first few years of teaching, and this is an illustration that he did of all the Cambridge graduates, like cycling off into the sky post-graduation. Lastly, this tiny little baby mug that I've had since, uh, for as long as I can remember. Ray is short for Rachel, which you might not have known. Um, this is another mug which I'm really, really fond of and couldn't get rid of, but also never drink out of because it's way too small. So I think this is going to join the mugs to be used to put stuff in for organizing pile. Finally, we have a couple of takeaway mugs. We have this 
Marauder's Map mug, which my parents got for me. These have been so, so useful while I've been teaching when I'm out on duty in the playground or whatever. I've used this mug a lot and I feel like, I don't know if this is a thing that you, has ever happened to you, but the silicon top has gone a bit sticky. So it's kind of still all right, but it's not lovely to drink out of. I much prefer this mug, which one of my teaching assistants gave to me as a leaving present when I left one of the schools I was at. It's from Waitrose and it's just such a solid mug. I've used this day in, day out for years and it's still in great condition. Finally, onto teapots. This is my standard teapot. I actually really, really like it. I just think it's such a nice color. It's kind of simple, but it has this lovely floral illustration on the top of the lid that makes it feel a little bit special. And the other teapot we have is this one, which is really handy because it has a built-in basket for tea leaves and so given that we pretty much exclusively drink leaf tea it's really really easy to use this teapot. So this is the finished result. I have the teas that I use regularly at the front and some of my favourite mugs. The glasses shelf is actually now only glasses. And at the top, I have the teapots that I don't really use anymore, but I want to get rid of. And some mugs, which we don't really use. And here we have the old mugs, moving on to their new life of service in the bathroom or beyond. <laughs> 